In this video, I'm going to tell you about how you can take your Warhammer Quest Blackstone Fortress miniatures, which are really cool, and use them in Kill Team. So Blackstone Fortress is a... It's, its full name is technically Warhammer Quest Blackstone Fortress. And so those of you who've been into the Games Workshop sort of thing for a while probably remember Warhammer Quest. It was a very popular fantasy kind of dungeon crawl sort of a thing. And earlier in the year, um, the folks at Games Workshop announced that they were making a new kind of War, Warhammer Quest game, a sci-fi one called Blackstone Fortress. And it came out... I think on Black Friday, actually, so a couple, three weeks back. Now, I've played some um, Warhammer Quest, and it's, you know, there's a lot of nostalgia to it, and now making it with this new thing with a lot of really amazing-looking new figures, kind of a modular uh, terrain board that you're playing on, all that kind of stuff was interesting to me, and I was thinking, especially after looking at the, the models that they came out with, pretty much everything in there is a new sculpt, as far as I can tell, and a lot of the stuff looks amazing. But I wasn't 100% convinced that I was going to get it right away because I got a lot of other stuff on my plate. I've got a lot of other models and things like that. I've got a lot of kill team that I've got to finish up and terrain so that I can do some battle reports and all that kind of stuff. And I've got projects. But then they announced that they were going to come out with statistics, data sheets, data cards, data slates, whatever you want to call them, for the models in Blackstone Fortress. And they were going to make them for kill team. If you've bought the Blackstone Fortress game, you know that there's a book inside there that says, here's all the stats for all the figures in there if you want to move these figures over to Warhammer 40,000. But the stats for Kill Team were not included in the box. And I'm filming this on Wednesday, uh, but they got released today as a free PDF. You can go on to, I'll put the link in the description below, but you can go on to the Warhammer community website and download the free PDF that has information and data slates and whatever for pretty much every single model in the game. Now I say pretty much, just here's a caveat, because there are a couple models in there that they don't give you stats for, as far as I can tell. There's these sort of weird spindle drones that so far I have not seen yet as my flip through on this. But, uh, you know, pretty much everything else has got a, a set of statistics in this free PDF that you can check out. When they announced that they were going to be making a set of rules for Kill Team for the Blackstone Fortress figures, I was like, yeah, and that pushed me over the edge. But when I was looking at the, Kill, the, the, the Blackstone Fortress figures, I was thinking to myself, I have a suspicion that some of those are going to have to be commanders and not just regular figures. And that's true. Um, you could, you've kind of got good guys and bad guys in the set. The whole concept behind Blackstone Fortress is that you've got a group of sort of kind of good guys, for lack of a better term, and then a bunch of Black Legion. And they're going on to this Blackstone Fortress, which has popped up out in deep space. And there are some creatures or beings, whatever, that are on there. And it's kind of like a dungeon crawl sort of fight to get treasure and all that kind of jazz. But the, the trick is, is that the good guys, some of them are commander only for kill team, and some of them can be played in regular kill team. So right off the bat, Janice Drake, who is the rogue trader that comes in that set, he's a commander. So that means that you can only play him in commander scenarios, commander style games. You can either set him at level one, two, three, or four, and there's points in the back of the PDF uh, for, you know, depending on which level you're going to have him at in your commander style game. Taddeus the Purifier, same thing, also a commander. Um, so is Espern Locarno, who is the Imperial Navigator with the funny hat, and so is. The Croot Tracker, who I can't even quite pronounce, Dayak Grek. Eh, anyway, the Croot Tracker, who's an amazing looking sculpt, I think. Um, also a commander. You can't use him as a standard leader. He's a commander. Um, also the Eldar Ranger, whose name is Amalan Shadow Guide, let's say. Also commander. So for those of you who are like, this is going to be really cool and we will drop these into all my kill teams and stuff like that, eh, sort of. If you're playing a lot of commander, yeah, they'll work out great and they'd be great you know, additions to your team. But if you're not playing commanders much, it kind of cuts down on what you can pick from the good guys. So let's say you're not, you don't play commander and you want to know, well, what can I find in the box that I can use in my, my army? Well, there's Pius Vorn with that super cool Vindicator uh, weapon. And... Um, she is uh, Astra Militarum, so I'm definitely going to be adding her to my Astra Militarum kill team. She's going to be very cool. 
um, Rain and Rouse, who are the two ratlings. One's a sniper, one's more of a demolitions. They are a pair. Like, they, if you use one, you have to use the other. And they're also Astra Militarum. So they'll also eventually probably end up in my Astra Militarum kill team. Um, you are 025, the Admac robot, who is actually older than the Imperium himself, is an actual man of iron, a.k.a. Uh, an unlicensed AI in a robot body from, you know, back in the age, dark age of technology. Uh, he's also not a commander, thankfully, so I'll be able to eventually put him into my Adeptus Mechanicus. And um, he's kind of cool. I mean, he's just a great sculpt. It's a great backstory. He's got an assault cannon and a power claw. I mean, you know, that does, that, that, that's good stuff, in my opinion, to be able to add to something that's Adeptus Mechanicus. So there's not a lot for normal non-commander kill team, but there's a decent amount of good guy figures that you can use there. But there is a little bit of an issue. I've already heard some kind of, you know, complaining a little bit online about them being pay to win. What that generally means is that uh, if you buy the Blackstone Fortress box because you want to have these particular figures, you're going to get an added bonus that someone who just used regular figures might not get. You see a lot of that, people talking about that kind of stuff with the um, specialty boxes that they sell for Kill Team, whether it's the Commander's one or the bigger boxes that come with some figures and some terrain. Both of those sets have a tendency to come with some tactics cards that you don't get in the book. So they're specific, kind of exclusive. They're trying to get you to buy the box. That's the way it works. If you're playing competitively, I can see this being an issue. If you're not, maybe not as much. And if you're just playing with your friends around there, you're probably going to maybe share them or something like that. Who knows? Maybe they've got one and you want to borrow it or whatever the deal is. But with these figures, it's a little bit different. Um, with Pius Vorn, she gets to be basically a zealot specialist. This model is always a zealot specialist, but this does not count towards the maximum number of specialists in your kill team. So normally you get one leader and up to three specialists, and you can't have any duplication between specialists. This rule here, which is called specialist retainer for her, says that she gets to be a zealot and it doesn't count as one of your three uh, specialists. So you basically can run four specialists. And uh, Rain and Rouse also have that, but they have it for sniper, which means because they're both Astra Militarum, in theory, you could be running with up to five specialists. You have your normal three, and then also Pius Vorn, and also Rain and Rouse. So, however, the trick is, is that it seems as if you may be able to have extra specialists, but you can't have any duplicate specialists. The rule on the card kind of overwrites what the, you know, the, the thing about having only three specialists, but it does not overwrite the fact that you can't, if you went with, say, Rain and Rouse, who are the sniper specialist, it doesn't seem as if you could put another sniper as one of your specialists in your normal slot of three in the warband. Same with Pius Vorn. She's a zealot, but it doesn't look like, according to the way it's written here on page 66, that you could have two zealots. She doesn't count as one of the three specialists, but she does count as a zealot, so you couldn't run two zealots in the same army. And then, for lack of a better term, there's the bad guys. They are known as the Servants of the Abyss. And some of these are astounding models, and really, frankly, one of the big reasons that I wanted to get this game originally. These guys are interesting in that you can't just take them and put them into your normal chaos list. Uh, you know, Hereticus, Astartes, or whatever. It turns out they're their own list called the Servants of the Abyss. So you have Traitor Guardsmen, you have Chaos Beastmen, you've got your big main guy whose name is Obsidious Malix, which is a little on the nose, but that's his name. Um, but he's a commander, so he has to be a commander. And again, you have to be playing a commander scenario to make this work. But you can use the Traitor Guardsmen, you can use the Chaos Beastmen, the Negavolt Cultists, the Rogue Psychers, and the Black Legionnaires. And they've got the normal rules, and some can be leaders, and some can be combat, and some can be whatever. But they all have to be together in one list, and it's a completely separate, different faction. So you can't say, I'm going to put some of these Chaos Beastmen into my Chaos Space Marine list, or anything along those lines. They've designed all of them in this group to be played this one way. The good guys can be put into some other different groups, ADMAC, um, you know, Imperial Guard, that kind of stuff. But the bad guys are kind of their own thing. 
Now, frankly, this doesn't bother me that much because they've given you so many different cool kind of options. And I've been sort of, since I saw the P PDF go up earlier today, I've messed around with some list building and trying to figure out how I'm gonna build my Servants of the Abyss list. So I'm looking forward to that. And there's a decent amount of figures in there that honestly, you should be able to pull it off. Even if you do wanna do a normal like commander style game at 200 points, there's still plenty of figures in the Servants of the Abyss to be able to make a 200 or a 100, a full roster, whatever you're doing if you're playing campaign or anything along those lines. And again, these models are amazing and I'm really kind of interested to see what people out there do with the lists. It says in the front of this document that this is a beta list or a beta document. So things may change as things go on. And they also do say, whilst these rules have been written for use in all types of kill team games, including matched play games, if you intend to use them at organized events, it is ultimately up to the event organizer as to whether these rules will be allowed or not, as is the case with all of our beta rules. So if people are complaining and going, well, this is going to ruin organized play or whatever. I mean, they've already really said that if the tournament organizer doesn't want to allow these units into their particular tournament, they don't have to. So the sky's not falling. If you're interested and you are, are have you've already bought or are thinking about buying Blackstone Fortress because you think that the models are astounding, understand that you'll now be able to use these models, some of them only in commander games, admittedly, and some of them kind of have to be their own faction, but you can use them in your kill team games going forward and have a whole set of brand new, really kind of astounding looking new sculpts to play with.